So as you can see, this uh, light is flashing at a low frequency, and this is due to a 2 to 1 multiplexer. Uh, there's actually two settings on this one. The first setting is this one where the light is flashing very uh, low frequency, and then we have another one where we switch the switch, and we, it ends up flashing at a very high frequency. And I'm going to explain how this 2 to 1 multiplexer gets us this result. This is the schematic diagram right here of a 2 to 1 multiplexer. Uh, where we have a selector and we have two inputs and the selector chooses which of those inputs is co connected to the output right here. So it can either be connected that way or it can be connected this way here to the output. We also have a 4 to 1 multiplexer. It works the same way except we have two inputs or two rather selector pins that will choose which input goes to the output. The 2 to 1 multiplexer follows the following truth table where you have your selector right there, your A input, your B input, and it follows the truth table as described right here. So we have A and not S and B and S which gives us a result Z. As you can see here I have all of the gates that we'll be needing to create the multiplexer and so that would be an inverting gate, OR gate, and AND gate and I'm about to go into detail about how each one of these works. What we have here is a NOT gate. The way this NOT gate works is we have VCC connected to this point in the circuit here. This point in the circuit then has a resistor and a transistor in parallel and then the output of the gate in parallel with the transistor. The way this works is when the input A is a logical high, this path acts like a short circuit, tying not A to ground. So when A is high, the output is not A. Conversely, when the input is low, then that means this circuit is not connected, and effectively A will be tied to 5 volts, which is a logical high. That is how we get our not A. This is our logical OR gate. We have VCC connected to the collectors of both of our two transistors. We have the two inputs A and B connected to the bases of our transistors. Then we have our output A or B which is tied to ground through these resistors. And the way this works is if A is a logical high it allows the connection to VCC through the transistor to be effectively a short circuit which is connecting the output to VCC or a logical high, making A or B a logical high. Whereas in the case shown in this image, we have zero volts on both A and B, and the only current we get through the transistors is the quiescent current, which is taken care of by our pull-down resistors. That makes the voltage on our output so low it's effectively a logical zero uh, as far as any gates later on in the circuit are concerned. This is the simplest AND gate I could come up with. We have our A connected to our collector of our transistor, which is right here, and we have our B connected to the base of the transistor. What this means is if B is false, it's a logical zero, then the gate is open and effectively A and B is connected to ground through this resistor right here. But if instead A is zero and B is high, there is very little power that can go through and this resistor will effectively tie A and B to ground. But if they're both high, then the current passing through the transistor can overwhelm that resistor and it will allow the A and B output to be at a logical high. This is the 2 to 1 multiplexer we'll be using in this lab. And we can see here we have all the gates, a NOT gate, AND gate, OR gate. This is our output Z and our inputs S0, which is our selector, a and B. This is how the logical expression that I had shown previously that creates that truth table, this is the circuit that creates that truth table and controls Z. There's also such a thing as a demultiplexer. A demultiplexer uses a selector pin and a input pin and it controls two different outputs given what the position of the selector pin is. And this is the logical diagram that describes how one of these work. We also have a 4 to 1 multiplexer. This uses two selector pins, as mentioned earlier, and one output pin. 
The way this works is it's effectively three two to one multiplexers that are tied together. And what we have here is a, a basically like a tree we've made where the first most significant bit, so that's S1, selects which of the uh, two multiplexers, two to one multiplexers plexers to select from. And then the least significant bit will select which one of the two pins that are connected to that to tie to our output Z. And here I have drawn LEDs to describe what's high at what point. We can follow this tree to understand it more closely. This tree right here shows us that the first bit decides which of the next branches to go down and then the second bit describes which of those branches to go down. And we could just keep going with this. Lastly, once we understood all of that, we could actually turn it into a real circuit. But before I went and I created it in real life, I created it in Tinkercad to make sure that this would all work and to test the code uh, more rapidly and make sure I didn't burn out any of the chips while I was doing it. This right here is our Arduino. We have inputs A and B, which you can see are labeled here, connected to pins 4 and 8. Those then go to our AND, NOT, and OR gates in the, dis in the way described in the 2 to 1 multiplexer. We also have a selector pin, which is connected to a, just a regular switch. That way, I can switch it from high to logical low easily without having to move any wires around. We have up top an LED. This one is just ancillary. I used this for troubleshooting earlier. And then the bottom LED is the one we care about, and we're seeing flashing at the different rates depending on the position of the switch. Now, because it's flashing so fast, the animation can't really keep up, so it just looks like it's always on. But as you saw from the beginning of this video, that does in fact work in real life. And uh, this code that we're running is right here, and I'll go into depth in that in just a moment. This right here is the code that I used to get the desired output. You can see here we're setting up a few variables. The notable ones, up at the top, we have the pins that A and B inputs to the multiplexer are on. We have a counter which will become important later and then I'm also tracking the current state of pins A and B. Next we have void setup and void setup is only run once at the beginning of the code when the Arduino first starts up. Here we're taking the number pin that A is on and setting it to an output and then we're doing the same for pin B. Next we go to void loop. This runs for the duration that the Arduino is powered on. We have that counter and what this basically does is every time we go through this loop we increment the counter. Next we have a delay right here of 50 milliseconds. This sets the tempo for the entire process of flashing the LEDs. We can go to this code here and what this basically does is it checks the current state of our pin A and if it's on then we set it to false off logical zero and then we set we update the pin a in our, our boolean that keeps track of what pin a is in what state it's in and then if it's not true if it's already off that's what this else is kind of implying then we want to set it to true and so that becomes a logical one or a logical true and we again update the state of this so this happens every 50 milliseconds and that's what gives us a very, very rapid flashing. Well, at the same time, if the counter gets over 20, so that means a total of one second has gone by, the 50 millisecond delay times 20 times, that allows one second to pass. And then we reset the counter to zero. And this is to prevent integer rollover. So basically, the number gets so large because it's been running for so long that the integer variable that it is counter can't hold that much information and so it starts rolling around that'll mess with the program it won't be terrible but you'll get some weird inconsistencies periodically next we have B state so if the counter is over 20 we check the status of our pin B and if it's high we then set it to a low as you'd expect for a flashing light and of course we update what the state of pin B is if it's a logical false already then we want to set it to a logical high that's what this is and of course we have to update the state of the pin. And that's all there is to this. It just loops over and over again. As you can see here by the working circuit, we now understand how to use the Arduino with two outputs to control the flashing of one LED using a selector pin that is on this switch I just changed. 
And you saw from the code that we have the two different inputs or two different outputs from the Arduino flashing at two different rates. And you can see here that it works when I switch the switch from two different positions. And all that's doing is switching the selector pin from high to low, so from positive 5 volts to 0 volts. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.